Hey everyone, this is Kevin T.R. Dickens, film critic of iCritic.net, and welcome to another episode of Movies I Found at the Dollar Tree Store, where we look at movies that I found at the Dollar Tree Store that maybe justifiably or not so justifiably deserve to be there. And I have to say, um, last time I went to the Dollar Tree Store, which was a couple days ago, there was a lot of DVDs. However, most of the DVDs were of Jillian Michaels, a yoga instructor, as you can see right here, and I thought that there would be no new episode. There hadn't been for a while. And then I found the other aisle with tons of movies that were totally worth going over and what I've done is I have made a essentially top 10 list for this week from the worst movies that I found to a couple that were actually pretty good and of course I'm not saying that all of these are for sure bad they just look really terrible to me now I know that usually you're supposed to start with the best and work your way to the worst we're going to start with the worst because the Little Prince, The Planet of the Bubble Gob. Apparently this is actually a thing, folks. Now, The Little Prince certainly gets screwed a lot in terms of movies. I mean, we had a wonderful animated movie from the director of Kung Fu Panda that was canceled in its theatrical release, and then Netflix picked it up and premiered it straight on streaming services where you can watch it right now and is definitely worth watching, but... It was always disappointing to think that that was deemed not suitable for theaters, but Norm of the North was. That that just that blows my mind. Well, not only does The Little Prince apparently have a really great movie that not a lot of people see, but guess what? They had to do this too. I mean, seriously? It's called Inspired by the Masterpiece of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, which I know I pronounced that incorrectly, but... Yeah, somebody actually looked at The Little Prince, this timeless story, this wonderful tale, and said, you know what it needs? It needs to be in space where we fight an alien called the Bubble Gob. Well, it's just a dollar, I guess. And the next movie on our list is The Hero of Color City. Now, funny enough, I actually remember seeing this in theaters. Not not personally, but, you know, I saw a listing for it. I saw, like, an ad in the newspaper, so I actually knew this was a thing. And clearly, it I, I it did not stand the test of time. I thought when I saw it, yeah, that's uh, not going to last very long. But look at the cast. Christina Ricci, Craig Ferguson, Rosie Perez, Wayne Brady. I mean, these are some not necessarily huge stars, but I know about them. And look, it includes a digital copy on Vudu. What's more, it features what appears to be coloring stickers. Now, apparently the um, digital copy is expired, but you know, we find out sometimes they don't really expire. So I guess for kicks and giggles, I'll just go to Voodoo and see if it's still redeemable. And if it gets redeemed, well, then I guess family members who are on my Voodoo plan are in for a little bit of a big surprise. I have to say, this is an intriguing one. Hey, babe? Yeah? Do you want to see the Hero of Color City? No. Oh, okay. Next movie on this is another animated movie. This one's called Justin and the Knights of Valor. And what's really strange about this one is that it seems like it was released in theaters at some point. I, I never heard of it. And yet, it's presented by Antonio Banderas. And it has Freddie Highmore, Antonio Banderas, J James Cosmos, Julie Waters, Alfred Molina, and Cherise Ronan. She's up for an Oscar for Lady Bird right now. And it's also rated PG, which means somebody at the MPAA actually <laughs> rated this thing. And it's, I mean, granted, it doesn't look as bad as the last movie, but uh, Banderas, you were in Shrek and Puss in Boots. Is this really where you want to go with your future animation career? And the next one on the list requires a little bit of history because I'm sure you've all heard of Air Bud. Air Bud was a sweet little Disney movie in 1997 where a kid bonded with a boy who learned to play basketball. And because it was mildly successful, Disney saw franchise potential, so we got him playing football and then volleyball. I think he played baseball at one point. And then he had kids. And then the kids had movies where they were like treasure hunting and going to outer space and, you know, all this stuff. And so when I see that, it's like, yeah, Disney, don't don't tell me you couldn't make Treasure Planet and The Princess and the Frog. 
hit movies. You just didn't want to. Well, the Airbud series got more and more spinoffs, and eventually we even got Russell Madness. As you can see, it says Airbud Entertainment presents Airbud Entertainment. I mean, really, that's just that's just cra crazy. And according to this. The tail wagging comedy venture from the creators of Airbud and Air Buddies stars John Ratzenberg, Will Sasso, and Fred Willard. Russell is an undersized but big hearted terror who dreams of having a family of his own. After running away from his where Russell gets taken in by the Ferraros, a family desperate to revive their grandfather's pro wrestling arena. That's about as far as I'm going to go because I think that speaks for itself. I mean, You've got pictures of the monkey riding the dog and the dog in the wrestling ring, and um, I, I, I don't know what to make of that. This is um, one of three movies I got that came with a digital copy, so I guess I'll redeem that just for fun. But And the next movie on our list is one that I definitely heard of, and when I first saw the poster for it, I said, you know what? In four years, I'll have a hit YouTube channel with over a thousand subscribers, and I'll be making some money on it, and I will have a hit show where I talk about bargain discount DVDs that are in the Dollar Tree store, and this movie will be part of it. Okay, I didn't actually think that far ahead, but when I saw the trailer, I did think The Legend of Oz, um, or Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return, was destined for the $5 Walmart bin. It turns out I was wrong. It was destined for the dollar bin. The next one, uh, RPG, real playing game. I actually don't really know what to say about this one because I don't know who Rutger Hauer is, but I picked it up because I mean, it looks like a legitimate movie. It got an MPAA rating, which is R for the record. And it, yeah, so. I don't know, it's just, did this one just fall through the cracks? I I might actually try to watch this one, who knows. And the next one on the list I picked up for one reason, Juno Temple is in it. That's the only reason. Of course, like I like the last one, I've never heard of this one, but it's legitimate, it's got big stars in it, it's got a rating by the MPAA, and uh, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna have to check that one out, but yeah, apparently a dollar, that's what it's worth. The next movie on the list is definitely something I've heard about, but it was Parental Guidance. I did see this in theaters, did not like it. Picked up for a dollar just to show, not only is it a relatively new movie that's in the dollar theater, I think it's, yeah, it's 2013. It's not even five years old. Already a dollar, starring Bette Midler and Billy Crystal. And if you want any indication of just how far their careers have fallen, Parental Guidance, already Dollar Tree Store. And the next DVD is actually a TV show, and I was kind of genuinely surprised in a good way to find this, but it's a Rocco's Modern Life DVD. And this is not a full season, so it's not something I would normally buy, but it has 14 episodes on it for a dollar. And I will definitely take 14 episodes of Rocco's Modern Life for a dollar, even if it means that it might eventually get replaced because, you know, season DVDs is just what I prefer. I want the whole season, not just selected episodes but you know like i said one dollar 14 episodes not bad and this final one the one they've saved for last because this is by far the best this should not be in the dollar tree store bin it should not be anywhere near the discount bin but i know that people have kind of started to forget about it even though it's still a good movie and that is gods and monsters by bill condon this as you can see won an academy award for best adapted screenplay and it was by the way nominated for best actor. This is a dramatic, probably fictionalized telling of the director of The Bride of Frankenstein and his unusual relationship with a male gardener that takes care of him. I believe it was a male gardener anyway, played by Brendan Fraser. Oh, this was also nominated for best supporting actress, by the way, I believe. And it's a shame that this, of all things, is in the Dollar Tree store. I mean, Movies like this should never be so little in demand that you can pick them up for pennies on the dollar. Now, the good news is if they got more than one copy, because this was the last copy and I, I definitely wanted this one. But if anyone else wanted it and there are multiple copies, they're probably picking it up. They're probably not expecting much and they are in for a genuine treat. 
But again, what is a movie like this doing there? It just, it shouldn't be there. I had this issue like a few weeks ago when I found A Royal Affair, which was an, I believe, Academy Award winning movie for Best Foreign Language Film on Blu-ray, $1. I mean, this while Suicide Squad still commands 15 That's just sad. And before we end this off, let's just take one real last look. All of these movies, $10, with this alone being worth 20 at least in my opinion. But, hey, you know what? There were at least a couple winners in this trip. Most of the time, there's not even that. So, what are you focusing? Have any of you seen these movies? Do you believe they should be in the Dollar Tree store, or do you think that's being way too generous? I would love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy the videos I make, consider becoming a patron member for as little $1 a month. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.